Hey everyone, welcome back. So previous episode, we talked about uh, how to use a Google Colab to essentially process any PDF document that you like to create your own LLM fine-tuned ready data format and push it onto the Hugging Face Hub. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it from there. Assuming that you have some sort of customized data on Hugging Face, we're gonna make that API call and then we're gonna fine-tune a Llama model. So here in this video, we're gonna use a Llama version two and that's effectively seven billion parameters. So I'm very excited to show you guys this. Uh, let's see if we can get this done. So with that being said, let's turn our attention to the notebook. So this is a notebook that I use. It's an adaptation to this guy, Maxime. Maxime, if you're watching this video, I just wanna give a shout out to your LLM course on GitHub. You are truly amazing. You put together all these amazing resources that all of us can learn and it's open source. I uh, just want to publicly here to say a big thank you to you putting all this effort together. So that's to give credit to Maxime. Now let's come back to this notebook. First of all, install whatever it is you need to install. Uh, let's start with the libraries. Uh, we need data sets, we need transformers. I think those are the main libraries that we need to get things set up. And also, uh, we are doing this using LoRa, right? It's a low-ranking adapter, uh, so obviously you need the PEFT library as well. Uh, first things first is you want to set up the parameters. So the first group of parameters is the model, right? You want to call your model. Uh, you have some sort of base model. You pick a Llama version 2, that's what I pick. It's by uh, this repo on Hugging Face. And then I pick your own data, right? So here I have my own data. That is the data set I stood up on Hugging Face in the previous episode, that's there. And then I want to fine tune model, I gotta give a name, right? This is a new name that I'm fine tuning, I'm just gonna call Llama 2 7 billion YSA. Uh, YSA is the name of data set that I'm gonna use to fine tune Llama model in this episode. So that's the first part of the parameters, which is gonna call model parameters. And then the next part is LoRa. So LoRa stands for low ranking adapter. What that basically means is it's going to the transformer model and to effectively update a small portion of the parameters instead of the whole thing. Uh, so that makes it faster and you're able to uh, train your model on a regular collab notebook. Here, uh, to be completely transparent, I'm using a T4 GPU on collab. The next thing is the 4-bit precision base model. Uh, this is the code and parameters to set that up. So I have the notes here to remind myself as well. So what the bits and bytes parameter doing is it's optimization related to the model quantization. And this is a QLORA or CLORA technique, right? So the quantization is what that Q stands for. And then the last part is the training argument. There are different things that have set up. Since I'm here on a T4 GPU, so I don't really have to set this as true. Otherwise, you're going to have to change that. And then I set up a different batch size for the device. From there, I set a gradient step, checkpoint, uh, learning rate. These are all related to the optimizer that you want to use. Uh, of course, you have some sort of a learning rate scheduler. Uh, here I set as a cosine. And then after that, I think everything else, I'm just going to leave it untouched. The next group of parameters is the SFT parameters. Uh, that stands for supervised fine tuning. And these are required for the SFT arguments, which we're going to use downstream in the notebook. So once you set up all these arguments, first step is to load the data. Here you use load data function to load the data set that you want. In this case, I'm gonna load up my own. And then the next step is to set up the configuration for bits and bytes. So this is for the QLORA configuration. And then after that, you load the base model. And I have a code here just to do that. And the model name is defined above. It is a Llama 2 7 billion model. Now we need a tokenizer. And this tokenizer should be from your model name because that comes with the model. So for the LoRa configuration, you wanna make sure you watch out for a couple of parameters. First one is the low rank matrices that is represented by LoRa underscore R. Uh, and then you also have a scaling factor, alpha, uh, that also equates to the step size in your algorithm. And then on top of that, you have a dropout. So I put a code down here in this configuration, and that will allow me to set that up. And then afterwards, I just need to set up my training arguments. And these training arguments is similar to your 
usual hugging face procedure. So I set that up and the last but not least is to define the trainer. Uh, the trainer essentially tells the algorithm, tells the computer how you want to train this thing according to the model, the data set, the LoRa configuration, all those things that we defined above and so on and so forth. And then also we have this max sequence length. Now this max sequence length is interesting because later on uh, we're going to make an inference and then we're going to try to see how that affects the answer produced by the large language model. Uh, but essentially this sets up everything and last but not least you just need to run the model. And I also have a kill and I also have a code here to make sure I save it. And it will start with your loss of 2.7. Effectively it will go down all the way to 0 0.08, which I thought it was pretty good. And I also calculate the wall time, which is 32 minutes. Uh, I think overall based on all of the models I've trained before, this half an hour wait is actually relatively okay. You're doing experiments, you're waiting for 30 minutes, you go grab a cup of coffee and come back, right? Uh, so I would say this time is probably okay. So then once you finish training, you save the model, I'm desperate to make an inference, right? So let's throw in a question here. What does YSA focus on helping? And boom, there you go. You call the pipeline function, uh, throw your model in there, throw your tokenize in there, and then you essentially be able to make a call to the function and boom, this is the stuff that it gives you, right? So it's gonna try to hit 200 maximum length. And then as it's trying to generate the answer, it's gonna stop until it hits that 200 level, right? So it may be it's in the middle of generating the next sentence, uh, but once it hits 200, it's gonna stop there. And uh, I think we have most of the information here. Uh, the question I wanna ask is, uh, what does YSA focus on helping? Uh, and then here we have a sentence here saying, hey, look, you know, this organization YSA focuses on helping BIPOC, LGBTQIA plus communities, and so on and so forth, uh, which I thought was pretty helpful. Uh, it gave us some additional questions and answers. That's okay. We can use that. We can make another API call to clean this answer up. No problem. All the information is here. Uh, last but not least, what I want to show you guys is to put this thing on Hugging Face as a new model. Uh, so we can pretty much load from scratch here. What I mean by that is uh, the author of the notebook actually provided the delete model pipeline trainer function here. Uh, so you can clean up all of the uh, RAM so you don't chew up the memory. And I thought it was pretty helpful because what this GC is doing is called a garbage collector. Uh, it basically cache everything uh, in the location and then it allows you to move on with a much cleaner environment. And also with higher memory, right? Uh, which I thought was a good thing to do. So I did exactly that and I'm taking base model again from scratch, building up the model, use a tokenizer, and then here I'm able to put everything on to hugging face. Uh, here I'm gonna use this CLI, means command line interface again, login, provide your credentials, and then from here uh, you can pretty much push the model to the hub. So I already did that and that's the link I wanna show you guys real fast. That's the model and then you can use in transformers and then there are two ways you can use it. One is to use pipeline, the other one is to load the model directly. Now, for me personally, my memory always crash when I use pipeline. So my preferred method is always to load the model directly and let me show you how that works. So somewhere down here, you can pretty much start a new notebook from scratch if you want to. Uh, hopefully that will give you a new environment, a clean slate, uh, so you can have the highest memory that you can have. And then you can use this code to load the model in a Python environment. Uh, this is actually kind of annoying. It takes two minutes and 53 seconds. Initially, I thought that's probably okay. Two minutes is a much less time than half an hour, right? I'll wait for two minutes. Uh, but it turned out that in a chatbot environment, you don't really wanna wait for two minutes here and there, right? So. Now this actually takes up uh, a good amount of patience when I'm talking to a, this model uh, in a chatbot environment. But for now, this is just an experiment on a CoLab notebook, so I thought it was okay. Uh, load that up, and then here I tokenize it, uh, use a model.generate function uh, to basically uh, set things up, uh, and then you can take the output and decode it, right? And once you decode it, it's a bunch of text, uh, you just return that and then you can uh, do all that in this function called a generate response. So the generate response function uh, pretty much allows me to 
make a call to the model that's currently loaded in the notebook environment. And then from there, you just start asking some questions, right? So who does YSA focus on helping? I have a data set here that uh, is the question that I took from here. Who does YSA focus on helping? And of course, it gives you uh, some answers that make sense, right? Let's go back to the data set. Why is it focused on helping BIPOC and LGBTQIA plus communities? Uh, then that's the correct answer. So the information is indeed there, right? Uh, which means that in sample, if you ask a question that is uh, similar to the question in the database, that's what I mean by in sample, uh, the performance is actually not that bad. Uh, so that's interesting, right? And then you can uh, read the answer, you can use another API call to clean it up, uh, and then you can go from there. So there you go. In this video, what we talked about is to use your customized data to find your Llama version 2 model with 7 billion parameters, and then to put that model on Hugging Face. So I hope you like this video. I know I enjoy the process of fine tuning my own large language model very much. And hopefully you get a little bit of excitement just like I do when you are playing around with your own AI models. So with that being said, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next episode.